Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, sorry, I'm going to kill the buzz a little bit. I got to talk to these groups here in the middle. So for the media here in attendance, uh, just kind of a reminder of how this is going to work. Um, we'll have um, President Linton, Gene, and, and Coach Tang will make comments. And we'll have Coach Tang take questions from up here. So if anybody has questions for Gene, we'll just do so after, um, after we're done here. But we've got crowd mics. Again, we'll be broadcast live on Big 12 Now and ESPN Plus and, and all of our social streams. So make sure you grab a mic. And, um, and state your name and affiliation for coach. So again, um, with that, we'll get things started um, with, with maybe the second newest member of the Wildcat family, our 15th university president, Dr. Richard Linton. Well, good afternoon, or should I say great afternoon. And welcome. This is an exciting day for K-State Athletics and our Wildcat Nation. I am pleased to welcome Jerome Tang as the new Heads men's basketball coach at Kansas State University. We welcome Jerome and his wife and his two children to our amazing Wildcat family. Jerome is everything we could hope for in the next great leader of our men's basketball program. He's a relationship builder, a motivator, a tenacious recruiter, and a defensive genius. But most importantly, he is a man of high character who puts family and community first. That fits perfectly with the K-State way. His success in his recent roles at Baylor are impressive, including a 2021 national championship five Sweet 16 appearances, and 15 straight seasons with 18-plus wins. And he knows the Big 12. At K-State, we too have enjoyed a rich men's basketball history, including four Final Four appearances and 21 conference championships. As you can see, we have a perfect marriage here. I will now turn over the podium to my athletic director, Gene Taylor. Thank you, Gene, for doing such a wonderful job with the recruitment effort and bringing Jerome Tang to Kansas State University. And go Cats. Wow, who called this meeting? That's a pretty good group. There's no free food, just not to disappoint you. That's coming later. Got to be here at 4 o'clock. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, what a great day. What a great day to be a Wildcat. Uh, just really can't thank everybody for being here. We're really excited about having Coach Tang with us. Um, I want to thank President Linton for his support throughout the process, uh, making sure he was uh, aware of who we were talking to and making sure he was on board. And he certainly was. And he had a chance to talk with Jerome on Sunday. And he called me and he said, Gene, you absolutely got the right guy. So I appreciate your support. A couple other guys, Kenny Lanou, uh, Casey Scott, and Josh McCowan were instrumental in this whole process, keeping me A, calm, uh, B, focused, and just really digging in to our candidates and, and really driving the message of what we need here at K-State. And, and they have been here a long time. They're so familiar with our basketball program. So I can't thank those guys enough. Thank you guys very much. Uh, certainly our search firm, uh, Katie and, and Chad from Turnkey Sports, you know, really deep, uh, deep down and found some really great candidates um, and we're very pleased. And I will tell you, and I've told the players this, there was a high interest in this program. There was a high interest because of the history of the program. There was a high interest because of the players that were here. And there were high interest because of it was K-State basketball. So one of the things people ask me is, so what were you looking for? You know, what were you looking for in your next head coach? And quite honestly, I answered, it was a lot of the characteristics and things that Bruce Weber brought to us. High character, integrity, doing it the right way and building a successful program in the right way and treating players well. You know, so when we were looking for our coach, we felt that's where we needed to start. And we met Jerome at Kansas City and we met him for an hour. And I didn't really know who he was personally. I'd heard of him. He was identified early in the process as somebody we really wanted to talk to. And I will tell you, after that first hour, we're like, OK, the bar has been set pretty high. And whoever we talk to after this is going to really have to try to match that bar. And we talked to some great candidates, all head coaches. And every time we kept coming back to Jerome. 
and kept coming him back, hey, we got to find out more about who he is as a person. And we went to his, uh, his home in, in, in Waco this past Sunday. And, you know, sometimes you think, oh, I'll be there for an hour. Three hours later, we basically had to leave because at some point they had to have dinner as a family. But uh, <laughs> we, it, was just a, it was just a fit, and you felt it. And you felt how strong connection we had to him and him to us, and more importantly, him to our program. And that's what makes this, this, this uh, hire so special is because of who he is as a person. You know, strong characteristics like ethics, moral character, treating players the right way. Treating players beyond the court of basketball was really important. And he's done that, and he's proven that. His fingerprints are all over the Baylor program. And of those of you that follow college basketball, you understand what they took over and what they had to do to build the program that it became. And his fingerprints are all over it. And we found our guy. We found our guy that fit all those characteristics that's going to be able to lead us to sustained success at a high level, which is everybody expects here. The players expect it. The fans expect it. We expect it. The support staff expect it. And that's why all the people are here, because you have that much care about this program. And he's feeling it from the day he got here. So we're really pleased to have his family here, Ray, his wife Ray, son Seven, daughter Island. He's got both his parents. And, and, and Ray's parents, he calls them his in-loves. Nice way to suck up to him. <laughs> I heard that, so I'm going to, uh, you know, I like that, just so you know. But it's not about, uh, it's about one other guy right here. And I'm about to introduce to you our next head basketball coach at Kansas State University, Jerome Tang. It's a great day to be a Wildcat. Yeah. Nah, I, I, my bad, let's do that again. It's a great day to be a Wildcat. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, having done this as an assistant in, in high school for so many years, there are a lot of people that I need to th thank. And so I'm gonna just ask you to bear with me just, just a little bit, because I've dreamt of this moment for a long time. And along the way, there have been so many people that have helped me. And our program will be marked three things. We're gonna be tough, we're gonna be appreciative, and we're gonna be passionate. We're gonna be tough, we're going to be appreciative, we're going to be passionate. And I would be remiss if I didn't take the time to be appreciative to the people who helped me get here. And the, first, I just want to thank the good Lord. And uh, I think most of you know, and if you don't, you'll find out that my faith is extremely important to me. And I'll come back and talk about that. But next, I want to thank my family. I thank my mom and dad who taught me work ethic and just, just showing up and just show up. And they were always there for me. I want to thank my beautiful wife, Ray, and she doesn't want me to make her stand up. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter, Island, my son, Seven. I have two boys that I adopted and helped raise, and Lamar and Richard, and they're not here, but extremely proud of them. I want to thank my in-loves, Calvin and Carolyn Carter. They've uh, taken me in. Other than that one time when I asked him to marry his daughter, and he said, hell, boy, everything was going well till you showed up. 
<laughs> Other than that, <laughs> he's been unbelievable. I uh, want to thank Will Reese, my friend, my brother. Appreciate you, everything you've done for me. Um, when I was a high school coach, there was a, my first job, there was a, a lady by the name of Dr. Jennifer Cooper and her husband Royce and a man by the name of David Kelly and his wife Brenda. And I had never been a coach before at all. And they took a chance on me and let me be their basketball coach. And I was blessed and because of those, those people trusting me, it started my career. Now there's a, I have to thank President Sloan, who was the president of Baylor University when he allowed Coach Drew to hire me and I didn't have my degree. And he told me that he just trusted that I would do what it took to get it and do what it took to, to help the program be successful. I want to thank Dr. Linda Livingstone, who's an unbelievable president, just a terrific woman, and uh, for her guidance, leadership, and support. I've got to thank uh, Mac Rhodes. And uh, what an unbelievable man of character, trust, belief, just a terrific, terrific leader. Just really, really passionate about the student athlete and about the people that he hires. Um, and there's this dude named Scott Drew. Um, you know, what I've found watching over the years when like coaches leave programs and um, people leave and get other jobs, there's this like deep divide that takes place and um, it severs ties and I, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all know that's not gonna happen except for two or three nights a year. <laughs> when, when it's gonna be real, 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 real tough on them. <laughs> when, when Coach found out I got the job, he uh, came over that night and he brought with him a bottle of wine that someone had given him in 2003 when he took the job at Baylor. And they told him, I want you to you, drink this when you want to celebrate something that's really, really great. Well, we won an NIT championship. We won, went to Sweet 16s, went to two Elite Eights, went to a Final Four and a National Championship, then won the Big 12 again, and that bottle was still closed. But when I got this job, he came over with his wife to open that with me. See, those kind of ties, those deep bonds that take colleagues to become friends and then to become brothers for life, that's what we're going to do here. I plan to be at your weddings. I plan to send you something for your, when, when your first son or daughter is born. I will have the picture up in my refrigerator and in my office. The kind of bonds that, that are not broken when you change colors the kind of bonds that are not broken by distance or time. And, and Scott Drew, he's a, he's a terrific man, but I expect you students to give him a hard time when they come here. <laughs> it is a, we had a terrific staff, and I can't name them all, but man, I just, men that are my, my brothers, and uh, they're, they're gonna be my confidants, and they want me to be successful, Matt Driscoll, Grant McCaslin, Paul Mills, uh, John Jacobs, Alvin Brooks III, Jared Nunes, Bill Peterson, just, I mean, I can go on and on, Jason Smith, Ty Beard. I, I just hate if I miss somebody, and that's why I didn't want to name names. And, but my mom knows I can't be up here for a short time. She says I talk a lot. <laughs> and then our former players, and our current players who every single one of them has texted me congratulations and um, just because of them I'm standing here and uh, let's not get this like twisted this is not about me right this is about y'all 
This is about y'all, right? The success of this program will depend on you and the players that we bring in. Okay, it's about players. And so we have to get players. And the way you get players and you get them here and you get, is that you have great fans because kids want to play in front of great fans and in great communities. And that's what attracted me to this place. I was always blown away by the fans and the community and the energy. And just, just extremely, extremely thankful for that. I, um, I must thank President Litton. It was a great Zoom, but I tell you, he's the only person, the first person in the whole group that taught me how to do the Go Cats. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand why they call you the goat. <laughs> it's not just because of the mask and the day off, right? <laughs> I want to thank Kitty and Josh and Casey. These guys were great. They came to the house. We had a great time. Uh, they were awesome. Um, said, said some things that, that allowed our hearts to connect. And Ray and I, we, 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 um, we really, we prayed for peace. You know, just before the, we met with them and they walked in the door and man, there was just a great sense of peace. And so I'm thankful for those guys. And, and then for Gene, Gene Taylor. I did my homework too. <laughs> and everyone I called talked about what a great reputation he has and what a great boss he is, and how he has your back, and you can trust him, and, and how real he is. And, and I'm gonna just tell you, when he sat in the chair, and I don't know if he was supposed to do it at that time or not, the code word didn't work. We was trying to figure out what the code word was. I actually took a 30 second time out so they could discuss the code word. And, <laughs> and, and came back and he looked me in the eyes and he said, Look, Jerome, I want you to be my head coach of our basketball program, and I trust you that you're going to do the right thing and you're going to help us win. And I feel it in all, with all my heart. And man, Gene, I, I can't thank you enough for that. And then, of course, I want to thank the K-State family, the student body, uh, the alumni, former players, alumni, and legend for allowing me the opportunity to steward your program. It's your program. Right, this is not about me. It's about us. I have this quote on my desk that said, it's unlimited what you can accomplish when nobody cares who gets the credit. Right? I, we, I don't care. I don't care who gets the credit. Let's just go accomplish it together. Let's just all roll up our sleeves and, and be, be the very best version of ourselves every day. And so I learned this, this phrase, right? e ma <laughs> no, no. e ma I get goosebumps when I say it, right? Every man a wildcat. to research it, right? I researched wildcats, right? There are two species of wildcats. There's a European wildcat, there's an African wildcat, and, but they have a couple things in common. They're intelligent and they are active. I see you, Willie. I see you, bro. <laughs> they're intelligent and they're active. So that fits great because on the court, we're going to be smart and aggressive, right? We're going to be smart and we're going to be aggressive. Now there's one other common trait they have, Gene, is that they're nocturnal. So fellas, I expect you in the gym at night getting up shots. <laughs> Stay away from Aggieville, get up shots. This is, uh, this is an unbelievable blessing. I, um, I've lived a blessed life, and, uh, but this is just the start of some really, really big things that's going to happen. And with everyone's help, 
with all the K-State family, the Wildcat Nation, we're gonna accomplish great things together and it's not gonna take long. It is not gonna take long. I didn't come to rebuild, right? Came to elevate. With that, go Cats! Derek Young, K-State Online. Uh, just what was it like to address your team for the first time last night? It was kind of overwhelming, like, because uh, I had dreamt of doing it for so long. And, but you never know exactly the situation you're going to walk into, right? And, but I love the eye contact. Um, guys were sitting up, paying attention, felt there was a, a connection. And, but we're going to find out in these workouts coming up, so. <laughs> Hey, Coach, Tim Fitzgerald from GoPowerCat.com. Um, how have you kept your emotions in check? I think I saw one video last night when you were talking to the kids that started to get away from you. Um, I really don't want to keep it in check. Right? I, this is who I am. Um, I'm really passionate. I care deeply. I have no problem crying. Uh, I have no problem laughing. I have no problem cheering. Um, that, that's, that's my heart. And when, I'm, when, I'm, when I really, really care about something, I, I'm all in. And so, um, you, know, I, you, you know, obviously you want to seem like you're composed, but I am who I am. Coach, Kellis Robinette here with the Wichita Eagle and the Kansas City Star. You've played Kansas State more than 40 times over the years. Just what, what would you say is your favorite memory, something that really impressed you about the Wildcats over that time? See, <laughs> what would be my favorite memories are not really what you want to hear. <laughs> so really what you want to know is what were the, those depressing times <laughs> when Rodney Magruder, we threw the ball the length of the court and Waco and Isaiah Austin didn't touch it and well the pass was high and then they had an under OB with one second to go and Rodney Magruder came off and we played a zone and uh, our guy did the wrong thing in the zone and he got a catch and shoot three to hit it and win the game. That, that, that was a pretty big moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of my, one of my really, like, we played uh, when Frank Martin was the coach and Lace Darius Dunn was on the team. And we came for shoot around and found a scouting report left out. And in the scouting report, it said Lace was selfish and he didn't play any defense, right, on the scouting report. And so Lace Darius proceeded to make like eight threes that game. And every time he made one, he looked at the bench and scowled at Frank Martin. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was hilarious. Now, I think I found out later that Coach Mills faked the scouting report <laughs> and put it there <laughs> so that Lace would find that. <laughs> um, I've had some, some great memories, both on the, the winning side of it and uh, on the losing side of things. And what I really remember is the student body. I really remember how cool it was to watch them come running in. And I remember the, the tearing up the paper and the throwing it up in the air and going, man, that's so cool, you know? <laughs> and then lock it in, lock it in, bro. You gotta get a win, you know? Um, so, so the environment at the games are the things that you really remember. Hi, Coach. Michael Goins with GoParacat.com. All right, I can't see you. Right here. Oh, there you go. Thank you. You show a quiet confidence about yourself. How do you derive that quality? Uh, the same way our guys are going to get it, like uh, trust my work, right? It's not about on the day if you're making shots or not making shots. you got to trust your work. When you put in the work, you can go out there and play confidently. And uh, the only reason I'm here is because I work hard. That, 
you know, my parents are immigrants. I'm an immigrant. You know, nobody handed us anything. And uh, we just outwork people. And when you outwork people, they either make excuses about why they're losing to you or they, you know, you know they got to give you credit. And we're going to get credit because we're going to be able to step out on the court and trust the work that we put in. And so it's the work. Coach D. Scott Fritch in the Kiss State Athletic Department. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Good. Um, just was curious, boarding the flight in Waco and then landing in Manhattan, what that stream of emotions must have been like for you. Can you walk us through that experience? Uh, well, I was hoping that uh, Emily would be able to get that iconic shot again, but it was cloudy, you know, and so she couldn't get the, the, the pick. But it was, it, it was really cool. I, I really, since Gene and them left the house, I've really had a peace about this. And um, people keep asking, are you overwhelmed? I, I'm more overwhelmed by the emotion of the reception and how people have really embraced me. And to know that there's a community that cares about me already and they don't really even know me, that, that's what's been more overwhelming than the task at hand. Jerome, Tim Everson, over here. Yes. Uh, Manhattan Mercury, you've you talked a lot about hard work. What's the thing that you're most proud of that, that, that hard work has, has, has gotten for you? I, I think the fact that Gene or anybody on the, the group could call people all over the country and ask about me, and most, most people are going to say good things. That, that the hard work has produced a reputation. You know, there's a, there's a saying, first you form habits and then habits form you. And so I believe that my habits of hard work has formed the, the reputation of my character. Coach, Jackson Schneider. With KSAL Radio. Um, you, you've been with the Baylor program for a long time and you've seen a lot of success and there have been unquestionably opportunities to take positions elsewhere why K-State and why now? Because Gene said yes. <laughs> he was the... No, he was the smartest guy, you know? I mean, if you want to know how smart our athletic director is, there is. <laughs> also, I, I firmly believe that um, there's a in this wonderful book that I like to read, it says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Amen. And I believe that um, there have been opportunities that I wanted to take, and uh, they were blocked on purpose, because there was something greater that, that was planned for my life. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, when people tell you no, it can impact your ego, make you feel bad about yourself, or you can say, God's got something bigger for me. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Coach Ned Seaton, also with the Manhattan Mercury. <clears throat> Welcome to town. Um, two big changes in college basketball or college athletics, transfer portal, and NIL legislation, the rules that allow players to make money off their name, image, and likeness. What are your opinions of those changes, and do they work to the benefit or the detriment of K-State? Well, I believe that student athletes should be able to take um, advantage of the opportunity to make money off of their name, their image, their likeness. Um, to, to stop a, a young man or to steal his identity and not allow him to profit from it, that's wrong. And so I'm all about that, right? Um, the thing is, though, that in the sport we play, uh, basketball, all these guys, they want to play professionally and get to the NBA. All right, that's the dream, right? There we go. So an NBA contract, right, if you're a first round draft pick, can be anywhere from 23 million to you know, nine million, right? 
the best NIL deal last year, and this is in, in football, is maybe $1.5 million. That's like pennies to dollars. So instead of chasing the pennies, we're going to be in the gym so we can chase the dollars, right? Because it doesn't make any sense to make a few dollars in college and not get a chance to reach your dreams. You need to be pursuing your dreams. We'll do everything we can to help in that aspect, but the focus has got to be on the basketball and on being the best player that you can be and then winning the most games as a team because 80% of young men who are drafted, they get drafted because they played in the NCAA tournament. How about the transfer portal? At Baylor, the national average for transfer is 43%. At Baylor, it was 16%. So two reasons. We told the truth in recruiting, right? And we loved our guys. Oh, guys, and they didn't, they didn't want to go anywhere else. So that's what I'm going to do. We tell the truth in recruiting, and then we're going to love our guys.